Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be discussing all things corporate governance. Um, so let's get into it. So why do you have to do this module? Why is it so important? You know, why do you have to put yourself through um, the Companies Act? I know some students dislike the Companies Act very much, but why is it so important, right? So I just want us to go back a little bit and think about um, a company and the stakeholders of the company. So you have the shareholders that, you know, are interested in the company's performance. Um, and in getting a proper um, shareholder value. You have employees that are dependent on their company's uh, performance to make sure that it continues to exist so that they can get work. You have the government, you have um, the management team, you have the board of directors. All of these people are stakeholders of a company and they're very much interested in how well it performs. Now, in terms of their interest, they have, you know, varying degrees of interest and so does their influence. So, for example, an employee might not be able to influence um, a lot of how a company operates, but the board of directors, on the other hand, has a lot of muscle in terms of making sure that decisions happen. And that's what brings us to um, corporate governance as a concept. It exists to make sure that there are standards and practices to ensure that a company is well managed and that the um, interest of, of the stakeholders is basically well balanced. And so if you think about what the Companies Act essentially aims to do, right? So they talk about, for example, what the role of the shareholders um, is. They speak about uh, what the role of the board of directors is. So who appoints the board of directors? When do they get fired? When are they personally liable? And so on and so forth. So the Companies Act basically sets out um, different aspects of how a company is to be managed. And if you look at, you know, the start of the Companies Act, you're going to uh, find a table of contents um, where it tells you which sections speak to which concepts. And I always say to my students that, you know, go and familiarize yourself with that table of contents, right? Just make sure that you're aware which parts to get what. So for example, part F specifically speaks of governance. Um, you get other parts that speaks to all issues that relate to shares. And so if you do get in a question, a question that speaks to, um, you know, the authorized shares or whatever other concept on shares, you will know where to go and look for this information. So that's a very important exercise that I would encourage each and every one of you guys to just do. And then if you think about what the King Code aims to do, it also essentially supports um, corporate governance. So one thing to maybe see or one thing to think about in terms of the differences is that um, the Companies Act is, a, is an act <laughs> and compliance is therefore necessary uh, or mandatory. But then the King Code is not um, an act and so companies do not have to comply with it. Um, the only companies that do have to comply with it are companies that are listed on the JC because application of King is actually a listing requirement of the JC. But if you also think about what the, what the King Code is aiming to do as well, it, it speaks of this concept about a stakeholder um, inclusive approach. So King essentially recognizes that companies do not operate um, in a vacuum. So they are very much dependent on um, or stakeholders, or rather they should also take the interests of their stakeholders um, into account in terms of their operations. And so it speaks to, for example, fine, if you look at principles one, two, and three, it speaks about um, how the, 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 the company needs to set, set an ethical tone um, at the top, how the directors need to ensure that the company is um, seen to be um, ethical. The directors themselves also need to be um, ethical. And then if you think about the rest of the principles, it then speaks to, you know, how a, a board of directors needs to be composed. So what mix of independence versus executive needs to exist? What mix of, say, skills, for example, needs to exist? Um, what, 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 what in terms of, say, diversity 
in the in the board so the king code actually sets out all of those things and then they say fine they recognize that um, a board of directors will not always be able to do everything themselves as a collective and so they will um, what's the word they will delegate some responsibilities to subcommittees the king code then speaks about um, how those subcommittees are to be composed um, if you just think of the different committees and their composition requirements that's also set out there it sets out um, what kind of a person the chairperson of the board the chairperson of a subcommittee needs to be and sometimes even sets out the skill set that is required for a particular um, subcommittee of the board so all of that is to essentially ensure that the company is managed properly just go back to think about like the role of the board as a collective so the board is essentially the ultimate authority when it comes to company decision making so the shareholders uh, cannot always um, you know make decisions about where the company is going they delegate that responsibility to the board and so the board has a right to um, do what they see fit to ensure that the company um, gets to where it needs to get and they then create shareholder value for their shareholders and so in doing this they then have the authority for example to appoint the executive team they can hire and fire uh, the executive uh, management team um, at will basically if uh, they feel that the company needs to go somewhere then they can make decisions surrounding how they get to that somewhere and so this would include for example um, ensuring that they oversee all of the things that the executive management does so they exist as an oversight body to ensure that their decisions or, or rather their, their hopes and dreams for this company are actually implemented by the executive team and so they then carry a huge um, load of responsibility. And so then the Companies Act then sets out, as well as King, sets out how they are to uh, behave in certain instances. So in short, that is how the Companies Act and the King Code support corporate governance. Now, how does all of this translate into you getting the marks? Because I figured that's why you're here. What is the exam technique um, in terms of answering um, corporate governance type questions? Well, I think it also depends on which level you're at, right? So the higher up you are in your degree, you are required to show a lot more application than say someone who's in second year or third year who's exposed to the King Code and the Companies Act for the first time. So that's also dependent or different um, at the different universities. So just make sure that you look at your learner guide. What I'm going to then do now in my next video is that I'm going to pick a question from one of the universities as well as an ITC question and then see how far we're going to get with that. Look forward to seeing you on my next video. Bye!